Meteors and meteorites. A meteor is also commonly known as a shooting star, but it is not really a star. So we'll put quotation marks around that. What you're actually seeing is a little piece of rock. Typically, it's from an asteroid and it is plummeting through our atmosphere. And as it comes through the atmosphere, there is friction. And that friction heats up that rock. That rock then heats up the air around it. So this streak of light that you're seeing here is not actually that rock, but instead the reaction of the air around it to the heat. It's actually ionizing the air. The rock sizes vary. I have on here small. Um, little streaks like this, you're looking at something probably about the size of a pea. Bigger pieces can be closer to like a softball size. And usually those bigger ones uh, will actually hit the ground. The small ones are going to vaporize long before they ever hit the ground. Now a meteor shower is very different. Meteors are random, but a meteor shower we can predict. And the reason that we can predict them is because they are associated with comets. When we talked about comets, when we talked about you know, our sun vaporizing the material and it develops a tail and as it comes around the sun, the tail points away from the sun. Well, you know, that vaporizing by the sun is causing little pieces of that dirt, of the dirty snowball, to fall off. So you end up with little pieces of the dirt from the comet orbiting around the sun. They've fallen off the comet, but they're still in orbit. So you get this swath of dirt, and every time the comet goes around, it replenishes this swath. So I always picture the character Pigpen from Peanuts when I think of a comet, because it's surrounded by this cloud of dirt and dust, and it's leaving this cloud in its wake, but it is continuing to orbit around the sun. So if that orbit happens to intersect with Earth's orbit, so here's Earth happily orbiting around the sun, if we plow through that debris, then it's going to come plunging through our atmosphere, and that's what we see as a meteor shower. So in this illustration, there's actually two places where we might get a meteor shower if the two orbits actually intersect. You know, sometimes one is above the other, but if they actually intersect then we get a meteor shower. And so there are well-known meteor showers that occur each year, and we know they're going to occur each year because Earth is always going to be in the same place in its orbit, and that comet orbit is always going to be in the same place. Because this is dealing with little pieces of dust from a comet, uh, typically these will burn up in the atmosphere. They will not make their way down to the ground. If it does make its way down to the ground, then you have a meteorite. So, uh, general rule of thumb, meteor soars through the atmosphere. A meteorite is right here on the ground.
So obviously, to make it all the way down to the ground, the original pieces had to be fairly large. So what ends up hitting the ground is going to be smaller than what started, because a lot of it's going to get burnt off. So you need to have something pretty good sized before you get an actual meteorite hitting the ground. Because these come from asteroids mostly, the types of asteroid is going to determine what type of meteorite we get. So we have M-type asteroids, which are made of metal. Well, that metal is mostly iron. So when we find it on the ground, it's going to be an iron meteorite. And so the top picture here is showing a, a whole piece. That's a huge, huge iron meteorite. This lower image is showing a slice. And you see this kind of crisscross pattern. Um, that is called the Wiedmannstatten pattern. I am not writing it because I can't spell it. But that pattern is only found in iron meteorites, and it has to do with the rate at which they were cooling when they formed, that you only find that in iron meteorites. Stony. It's made of silicate, just like an S-type asteroid. Iron meteorites are easy to find because they stand out, Stony meteorites a lot harder because they look like rocks and so they tend to blend in. But a way to test is, is it magnetic? Uh, iron meteorites definitely are magnetic. Stony meteorites typically are magnetic as well. There's usually little flakes of iron in there. So if you find an unusual looking rock and you want to test to see if it's a meteorite, uh, the first thing you want to do is see will a magnet stick to it. The rarest kind are called stony irons. They're a mixture of stone and iron. And recall our C-type asteroids are composed of C was the carbon, but also stone and iron. So these are from those rare, pristine asteroids, the ones that have not gone through changes. And here you can see in the picture, you've got this uh, mixture, you've got this lattice of iron in here, and then rocky stuff in between. So it's an even mix of stone and iron, and one of the prettiest kinds of meteorites. Because they're more rare, they are also more expensive. So if you're planning to... Uh, collect meteorites, uh, just be aware. Irons and stonies, usually pretty affordable. Uh, stony irons, usually more expensive. But beautiful, beautiful meteorites.